So, Ryan, before we get into your business, I want to get your perspective as someone who is seeing so much data about all the goods being moved around the world right now. We got some mixed results today from Home Depot and Walmart that give us sort of a mixed picture of where the consumer is. What's your sense of what consumer demand is right now based on how many things are moving around and how they're moving? Yeah, we're definitely seeing some slowdown in, in consumer demand, demand destruction, as they say. We're seeing warehouses are starting to really fill up. And, and actually, a lot of our cargo is coming out of the ports. The warehouses don't have any place to put it. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty ugly situation out there, especially for kind of like direct-to-consumer brands that are newer and hotter and don't have a really long track record by which to forecast demand. I mean, it's, it's difficult for everybody coming out of the pandemic to make these predictions. But you've had such supply chain disruptions that – Getting the quantities right is really hard. You have these bullwhip effects where all of a sudden there's too much inventory in stock, and it's an, it's an ugly picture for a lot of companies. And what is the specific impact you're seeing from the Shanghai lockdowns? Is that having a specific ripple effect? Uh, yeah, you're seeing a little bit less production. Factories are not operating at 100%. Been the trucking capacity. The port's actually running really smoothly in Shanghai. It's more factories are slowing down a little bit. Um, the early signs are that it's starting to open back up and companies are ramping back towards production. It's it's a little bit too early to say exactly what that bubble will look like, how many goods, the, the bubble in sense of all these orders that have been placed as those move through the system to come down. Uh, we'll know in a few more weeks. Hey, Ryan, it's John Ford. Good to see you again. Uh, we talked about a year ago and you were talking about, you know, high prices, which in a way are good for you, but also having to disappoint customers uh, with, with the lack of capacity. Where do things stand now, now that, I mean, we've got supply chain issues, but they're different supply chain issues than we had a year ago? Uh, we, they are. So last year, Flexport had a waiting list, and we actually couldn't take more customers. We couldn't even serve all the customers we had. It's a little, you know, feels a little odd to win this award as the number one disruptive company, when in fact, we don't feel like we're doing a good enough job on behalf of our customers. Well, the, the situation has definitely changed. Prices have come down. But um, even perhaps more importantly, you can get space now. There is capacity. Flexport's open for business, finally, uh, no longer having to put everybody on the wait list and can, mm -hmm. can serve customers. So we hope to see improvements in transit time as well as the, the lower costs coming down.